Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Thrilled and honored to have the head coach of South Alabama basketball on, Richie Riley. Jag started out slow this year, but turned it around, winning eight out of nine, finishing 16 and 14, nine and nine in the Sunbelt at one point in time, two and seven. Uh, what prompted the turnaround, coach? We got really good kids in our program. Um, that's that's the first key. They We played a really tough non-con schedule. And then we got off to a slow start in league play. We were a little bit beat down from the non-con. But our kids never dropped their heads. Their attitudes remained positive, And they got better every single day. And that was their mentality and what type of people they are. And um, it showed late in the season here. We played our best basketball the last 10 games. And we hope to be able to ride that momentum into the conference tournament starting tomorrow. Let's talk about uh, that non-conference schedule. FAU turns out to be one of the best teams in, in the group of five. Uh, Florida Atlantic over back at Boca Raton. You had them on the schedule. UAB is a nice in-state matchup, but they're always tough. Uh, who was the uh, the brain power that put together <laughs> put together the out-of-conference schedule there, Coach? <laughs> it, happened, it happened by accident a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we went on a foreign tour of the Bahamas, so we had to play an extra buy game um, to fund that, to pay for it. So we kind of came together. We got New Mexico. We got bought by them. And we, you know, they, they're having their, one of their best seasons right. in a long, good too. long time. They've been in the top 25 quite a bit. We got, went to Oklahoma, good team. Um, it's struggling kind of play a little bit. And then UAB is really good, uh, really good. And then FAU speaks for themselves. I mean, they've been in the top 25 basically the whole second half of the season and they're really good. And we, and we played some other good ones, too. I mean, you look at Townsend, we played them on a neutral floor. They've won 20 games. Um, played Alabama, who's arguably right. the best team in the country. That's right. And um, our, our schedule was, you know, top 10, top 15 in the country. And I think it's helped us. So we we didn't do it on purpose necessarily. But when you're coaching at this level and you're scheduling, it's really hard. It's, you know, you, you don't have – when you're in the Power Five, you can buy – eight or nine games that's eight or nine home games that you're probably going to win um unfortunately we can't do that so we got to go on the road some we got to be creative and um this year was by far the toughest non-con schedule i've ever had talking to richie riley uh head coach of south uh, alabama basketball playing app state uh actually later on today uh in the uh, sunbelt conference tournament in the second round uh all right so let's let's give a little people a little bit uh, behind the scenes that they may not understand. We, we wait about 10, 15 minutes after a ball game, uh, win or lose. And if anybody needs 10 to 15 minutes after a ball game, it's, it's Richie Riley win or lose. So this is where I saw the season turn around. Cause you guys, you guys had lost four in a row, but in three of those games, you actually played pretty well, right? You played Southern Miss on the road very well. You played the Cajuns very well at home. Uh, and then you played coastal pretty well on the road. The turning point though, was the coastal Carolina game. And Richie may have needed about 30 minutes after that one because you came in still shaking after that ball game. Uh, do you remember that? And what happened after you lost to – it was actually losing to Old Dominion um, because then you guys, you know, you won three in a row, kind of blew one to Troy, then you rattled rattle off five in a row before losing to the Cajuns to wrap up the regular season. But the whatever happened between Old Dominion and I guess the next game was Troy, uh, you know, you, you lit a fire under the guys. Yeah, their season really turned. Um, and I apologize to our fans because that's not well, that's right. know, who we are <laughs> Who we are as a program. Uh, um, we haven't been that. We always show fight. Um, you know, we don't win every single game, but we show fight and we compete. And that's who we've been. You know, we've not had a losing record since we've been here. Um, coming off, I think, before we got here, there's five consecutive or six consecutive losing seasons. So, we had, you know, that we just weren't showing fight. And I – I, I'm very honest with our guys when I coach them. Um, I'm brutally honest. And we just weren't who we needed to be at that time. And I, I give credit to our team. They they changed their focus. They embraced the message that as a staff we were we were telling them and and we changed. And sometimes when you win a couple, you get that momentum and you get that confidence and you get that belief. And I think we kind of did that. I think our guys realized more than they had all season what goes into winning. And they've been able to replicate that. And, you know, it takes what it takes. You got to come out there every single day, every single night and do what it takes to win. And, you know, we've been doing that down the stretch. And 
that that's the challenge though when you coach 18 to 22 23 year old kids is finding a cons that consistent behavior that leads to winning and that's what you fight with all season long and down the stretch here we've certainly found that all right so one of the things oddly enough it's, it's only was a couple of weeks ago so it must have been during the three uh the first three game winning streak uh, that you had and i did uh i did an episode is south alabama dangerous come you know, Sun Belt Conference tournament time because kind of struggling. But if somehow the three-point shooting came around, you guys could kind of hang with anybody. Up and until the last game of the regular season, make or miss them, there were always wide open three shots. You very rarely took contested three-pointers until, uh, the, you know, the Cajuns kind of changed up the defense uh, that they were using against you. Um, and all of a sudden, oh, my God, you won three in a row, and then you, you, you rattled off five in a row. I think you were like, uh, you know, 50% against Southern Miss. At one point in time, you know, in the streak, you had 14 straight field goals. Seven of them were three-pointers. You could miss like 16 out of 21 at one point in time in the first half. Um, and then all of a sudden, because you guys like to, your style of play is liking to get up and down the court. Then all of a sudden, maybe we need to take the air out of the ball a, a little bit and be a little bit more methodical with our offense. And then you start hitting threes. And all of a sudden, you know, you guys won you know, five in a row and eight out of nine. Yeah, we've had to adjust with our personnel. And we've, we've got really good shooters. I, I felt like we would shoot the ball at a high level all season. And we just, early on, we didn't shoot it very well. And it, it has to do with, you want to get quality ones. And like you said, we've got some really quality looks. It's it's huge when you can touch the paint with it first and then spray it around out there. Those go in a lot, lot more than when the ball doesn't touch the paint and you take some of those quick, threes off the deck or or quick out of rhythm threes so we've we've done a nice job especially Isaiah Moore of getting getting a ton of paint and seeing some guys and you know we have good pieces out there to shoot it in whether it's Judah Brown or Owen White Turbo Jones Jamar Franklin um, Greg Parham we've got we got guys that are capable of shooting the ball in and finally down the stretch here I think our shot quality improved, but but also our confidence to make shots. Um, it, basketball is such a – it's a confidence-driven game. And, you know, your confidence, there's ebbs and flows. you got to be really tough mentally to fight through, you know, missing your first two or three shots and then having the courage to make your next two or three. And, um, you know, we fought with that some. We fought with that some. But, but down the stretch here, I think our guys have great confidence shooting the basketball, especially when we touch the paint first. And we're taking inside out threes. All right. So a couple of players that you mentioned, and maybe when you didn't, one of those guys, I don't know if he was struggling to make them because he was struggling to take them. Like he would not shoot the ball. Like Owen White would not shoot open three pointers. And I really wasn't sure why, you know, he'd be like one for two or two for three. Why isn't he taking like five or six or seven? Because they were open threes. What went into his, his uh, approach that changed uh, giving him the confidence to make them, even if he is, you know, he wasn't happy with the, you know, he was four for 11 in one ball game, but he made some big threes in that game to help you win. Yeah. Owen White's the most intelligent player I've ever coached. Uh, um, I'm talking about just general intelligence. He's got a mechanical engineering degree from one of the most prestigious engineering schools in the country. Um, and just overall incredibly intelligent. And sometimes he lets his intelligence get the best of him. Right. And, you know, I think there was a stretch where he kind of looked around, you know, moving up a level, probably two levels, you know, you're moving up to a big time mid-major basketball conference. And he, I think there was times where he, his confidence, he didn't feel like, you know, he could, he could do the same things they did at Michigan Tech. And, and we had a talk and I told him, I said, man, you're, you're a division two All-American. The things you've accomplished, how good a player you are, you need to start acting like it. You know, you don't need, you, you belong here. And he really took another step. I mean, he embraced that, and he's been super aggressive um, looking for a shot. He's also getting some drives now. He's getting fouled more. Um, he's a really good player. And, and sometimes when you transfer up, it takes you a minute to, like, get your feet underneath you and understand, like, hey, I am good enough to play this level. I think he certainly knows that, and I think it's shown in his play down the stretch here. All right, let's take a time out. We'll be back with more with our conversation with South Alabama head basketball coach Richie Riley. Talks about the uniqueness of all Sun Belt guard Isaiah Moore and looking ahead to playing App State in the second round of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. But first, let me tell you a little bit about FanDuel. It's the midway point of the NBA season, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel 
America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Let's discuss more with South Alabama basketball coach Richie Riley about how unique Isaiah Moore is. He's like any guard I've ever seen. Uh, And after having their way against App State a couple of weeks ago, the Jaguars taking on the Mountaineers in the second round of the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. South Alabama, the eighth seed. App State, the ninth seed. That'll tip off at 1130 this morning. Let's have more with our conversation with South Alabama head basketball coach Richie Riley. Talking to Richie Riley, head coach of South Alabama basketball. We'll get to the uh, Sun Belt Conference Tournament in a little bit. They are taking on App State, 11.30 a.m. on a Thursday. All right, so I'm trying to figure out a word for Isaiah Moore, but I think the the word I came up with is, is unique. He may be the most unique college basketball player I've ever seen. There can't be anybody outside of maybe the Cajun point guard, who's also the same way. Neither one of them shoot three-pointers. You got to beg him to shoot three-pointers. He... He pump fakes himself shooting three-pointers like, all right, I'll take this if you want me to. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, He backs down guys that are his size. The help defense never comes over because they think that he's going to alley-oop it to uh, either Marshall Kearing or Kevin Samuel. And yet he keeps on making these floaters, right? I mean, he shoots over 50% because most of his shots are from like three feet in. I've never seen anything like him, Coach. He's I've never coached anybody like him. Um, Yeah. He he has he has really good feel and really good IQ. And the way that we like to play, we like to wheel post and we like to play off two feet in the paint and, and, and you know, use our fakes and use our pivots. And he embraced that completely. And I've never seen a kid apply something that we've tried to teach better than him. And it just it speaks to his IQ, it speaks to his coachability. Um, he's like, he's like our version of Derrick Henry. I mean, he's a 40 carry back, man. Right. We, we give it, I mean, we just constantly, he's got the ball in his hands. His usage rate is one of the highest in the country. And he just takes, he takes a beating in there, man. They don't call a lot of fouls for him. It's really frustrating sometimes because he's in there the whole game. I mean, he's going to get it in there and he's just a special player. I mean, his story is remarkable. No, no offers out of high school. He goes, he goes to Franklin Pierce, turns them into the top 20 Division II team in the country, becomes a Division II All-American, and then he steps up a level and doesn't skip a beat. I mean, he's first-team all Belt player, average 18, almost 19 points, shooting over 50% from the field. I think he's like third in the country with field goals in the paint. Like, it's like Zach Eady at Purdue right. and maybe a, a, another big guy like that that's right. like everybody knows, and then it's Isaiah Crazy. Moore. I mean, he makes, makes 10 – most games he makes 10 plus field goals and they're in the paint, you know, within right. three or four feet. So he's, he's special, man. I, I just hate that. I don't get to coach him more than one season. That's I'm, I'm miserable about that. I wish I would have got to coach him longer. And then it feels like I, I, you mentioned you were teaching it, but I would bet if we looked at the first 15 games of the South Alabama season and how often turbo Jones or Greg Parham back to guard down, uh, it would be much more, it would be exponentially more the last 15 games because they seem to mimic what Isaiah Moore has been doing and it's just as effective for them. They do. They're getting better at it. They are. He, um, and, and we teach that. We drill it. We drill it. We drill it. I mean, it's from the day they get on campus, that's, you know, our skill work and what we do every single day. So they're getting better at it. Um, I joke with everybody. I tell them it's like, it's like karate. Zay, Zay is a black belt. And everybody else is trying to get to a black belt. So right. that's hopefully as we keep going, you know, turbo next year, hopefully he becomes a black belt and, you know, we'll post and play in that way. Yeah. We got a heck of a training tape though. I know that like with Isaiah Moore, we've got that, we got that thing clipped up and, you know, when the freshmen get here, they're going to watch it. And every, from, from here on out, cause I don't know that I'll ever coach a kid that's better at doing that than he is. 
couple more minutes here with uh, head basketball coach of South Alabama basketball, uh, Richie Riley. Let's talk about Kevin Samuel. Uh, second time he has won conference player of or uh, conference defensive player of the year. I think he's the nation's active leading block leader. Uh, he seemed to come into his own after maybe uh, a little shaky start as well. Also, he is on fire at the free throw line. Yeah, he's unconscious. He was three to six <laughs> last game. He's unconscious. He um he has though, man. Like he work, he really works on his free throws. And you know, people out there that watch his play, they look and they're like, you know, why can't he hit a free throw? It's a little harder than you think when you're seven feet and your hands are as big as his. And again, it's a confidence thing. And he's he's actually operating at the highest level of confidence probably ever has from the free throw line. Right. And I'm happy for him because it is hard when you get fouled and go up there and you miss and you miss and you hear the groans and the, you know, from the crowd and he he's doing much better. But as far as his game, I mean, he's, he's one of the best interior defenders probably to ever play college basketball. When you look at, you know, when you look at his body of work, what he did at TCU, what he did, you know, being the ace Sun defensive player of the year last year. And now he's the Sun Belt defensive player of the year. And then you look at his rebound numbers, um, just, he's had a historic college career and just a phenomenal kid. And he, I, I don't know where we would be without him. I mean, he's an elite rim protector. He's, he's had some moments offensively too. And I hope he has some down in Pensacola, but just a great player. You got a bright future playing well beyond when he leaves here. All right. You, you usually, you know, don't play a lot of freshmen, but you seem to have brought Jamar Franklin around. He started out pretty good and then maybe had to learn a few things. And then, I don't know about out of desperation or, or need because you needed some threes and you popped him in there and he started hitting some threes. Yeah, he's an elite shooter. Um, but again, confidence is a powerful thing. He's got to, you know, as an 18-year-old kid, he's a young freshman. He's a baby. And um, sometimes his confidence has went up and down, you know, when he's missed a couple. Um, but he, there's no question in my mind, I'd be shocked if he's not a Sun Belt all conference player in his career here and maybe multiple times. I think his he's incredibly talented. He loves hoops and he's given us a boost in a lot of games this year. I mean, huge boost. Hmm. And I think obviously his best days are ahead of him, but as a freshman, he's came in and he's played meaningful minutes. And um, as a young kid, that's hard to do. Another thing about him is in practice, he guards Isaiah Moore a lot of days and he guards those guys. <laughs> It's helped him a ton. I mean, you Very see good. what Zay does in the games. So he's had to guard those guys and get bumped around and, you know, realize the importance of living in that weight room in the off season. And um, he's going to be, he's going to be a really, really special player here. And I think, I think he'll, he'll end up scoring a ton of points here and making a ton of threes. I think, you know, you may see him in the record books one day in, in our program history. All right, let's wrap it up here. Richie Riley, South Alabama basketball coach on Locked On Sunbelt. You're taking on App State. Beat them a couple of weeks ago pretty handily in Mobile. What do you do to when they make the adjustments as as, as Louisiana made adjustments uh, to you guys after, you know, the Jaguars gave the Cajuns all they could handle? Actually, twice. The second game was only a 10-point game, but kind of was that most of the second half, whereas the first one could have gone uh, either way. What kind of issues does App State present? Yeah, they're a good team. They they really are. We played incredibly well here, shot the ball really well, executed really well. We defended them. Um, and it's going to take that this time, too. I mean, in my opinion, there's nine or ten teams in the conference tournament that can – I wouldn't be surprised if they were holding the trophy up on Monday night. That's how deep our league is. And that's how hard our league is. And App State's one of those teams. Um, you know, they, they've they had huge wins. They went to James Madison and won, you know. And, you know, you can go through the whole league and you can say all the wins that everybody's had. There's not a big separation from one to nine. Like, there really isn't. You can see that the body of work all year. And um, they, they got one of the best players in the league. Donovan Gregory is, is tough. He loves the wheel post too. He gets it down in there and his strength, he's crafty. And then they got shooting around him. You know, you got Boykin, you've got Harkham, who's a really good guard. Um, Huntley hit four threes the other night at Georgia State, big long shooter. Um, and they're, they're going to be tough. It, it's going to be a heck of a game. I mean, it's 
you can throw out the first matchup because when you get down to Pensacola, it's different. We found out we we saw that last year. You know, obviously we were missing JJ Chandler, who was our leading scorer, but we beat Little Rock very handily here, and we went down there and and got beat in the first round. Um, you know, it was right after we lost JJ, but still, it's it's hard. It's a new season, and you know we've got to play. We got to play better than we did the last time because I'm I'm sure that App State will be ready to go. Now you guys play at 11:30 as a tournament. Do you like getting it the getting it out of the way instead of waiting all day? Or how do how do you like uh, how do you like the setup? Plus, you get an I off like day 100%. if you win. My anxiety and my the way that I am, I I prefer to play early. I don't like to wait all day. You know, when we played last Friday on ESPN, we didn't play till eight o'clock, and it felt like that was like 48 hours from the time I got up. So I mean, I'm glad we're playing early. You know, it's not too early. It's 11:30. There's time to get up get awake get ready to go and um go out there and play that's i I prefer that a thousand times over waiting until eight or nine o'clock he is richie riley head basketball coach of the south alabama jaguars taking on app state uh thursday 11 30 a.m in the second round of the Sun Belt conference tournament thanks for your time coach and we'll see you in pensacola thanks always a pleasure see you down here